Hello world, and welcome to Arc Pro. I am very rusty at making videos, and I'm just going to say that really quickly. Because I haven't posted anything all summer. But it's not from lack of trying. I genuinely wanted to post content on a regular basis, but I've just... I just couldn't. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Just the reasons I couldn't post anything. So it started at the beginning of summer when the pressure and stress of all the goals and the processes I had just working in my mind got to me. And my doctor advised me to just take a break. Take a break from all the things that were stressing me out. If it wasn't detrimental, then I just needed to stop. And that meant YouTube videos too. So I started looking into myself more. Why was I putting so much pressure on this thing that I meant to be fun? Why was I telling myself that it had to be done a certain way and I had to rush and I had to get things out as soon as possible when there was no one, absolutely no one telling me I had to do these things? It was all just me. And I realized it was because I was afraid of something. I was afraid of not trying and not pushing myself because I have goals. I have things that I really want to do. And it scares me to think that because I didn't work hard enough, I didn't get to that goal. Working hard means to me working consistently and burning yourself out and, you know, never having that breath to say, okay, you can relax for a minute and then continue later or something. No, it just has to be constant. And if not constant, it's non-existent. So yeah, when I stopped, as I expected, it became so difficult to start back. I managed to keep going with drawing a few things uh, and posting them on Instagram. But as far as YouTube was concerned, it was so difficult for me. Then I started thinking more about, okay, well, why am I doing this? Why am I making videos in the first place? And is anyone interested in them? I know why. I started making these videos because I wanted to test myself. I wanted to expand my range and learn something new. You know, And I wanted an outlet for my random creativity. I mean, you can probably watch the intro video to my YouTube, but yeah, it, it's all there. All the parts are present. I just needed to create something. And as for the question of, is anyone interested? I mean, <laughs> I'm not really sure for the, the wide population is interested, but I do know that a few people have told me encouraging things and um, yeah, it was nice. It was nice to know that someone had seen and appreciated what I did. But then why was I not able to continue? You know, I, started to have a few doubts and started to worry that the videos I was making weren't good enough or that what I was saying didn't have enough value. And I researched it a bit more. It's something called imposter syndrome where you are in a position but you don't feel like you belong there. You feel that you only got there through dumb luck and at any point someone's going to call you out as being a fraud, which I've been waiting for that hat to fall for so long. But I'm not a fraud because I'm not really talking about anything that I haven't personally experienced or done. And if someone else has a better way of doing things or if they can prove me to be wrong, then that's okay. I mean, we can all learn from each other and I'm open to learning new things. That's what this whole thing's about, learning new things. So again, why would I feel like I'm wrong? Or why would I feel like I'm an imposter here? It's just me. It's just the thoughts in my own mind that are holding me back. It was easier at the beginning to do all of this because I wasn't really thinking about the consequences or the aftermath of facing all these fears and challenging myself in these ways. Because I was just focused on 
doing everything as quickly as possible and getting it out. It was only when I got the break. So what's the rule here? Just don't take breaks now. The rule is to really find the balance. How can I balance this, this drive to create and this urge to try new things with a healthier sense of you know, me really being able to do so, you know, and not feeling pressured or overwhelmed or the sense that I'm not doing enough, because that's seriously a big one for me, the feeling that I'm never doing enough. You know, especially in social media, you'd see people who can post things every day and who can make amazing videos and you think to yourself, wow, they're doing this all so effortlessly. I'm probably not, I probably am missing something or I'm not good enough or I'm not, I'm not at their level. But I mean, that's fine. I mean, I'm not here to be on their level. I'm here to be my own level. I'm here to learn at my own pace and at my own skill level. So there you go. I mean, I just got to do it, right? It's kind of a personal problem here, but I think that many people have similar issues. You know, I was talking to one of my other friends who uh, makes jewelry, and she said something similar, that when she does something new, in the moment, it's not that hard. But then when she has time to really think about what she just did, and then contemplate doing it again, it becomes so much more difficult. So maybe it's something that creatives and creators go through, that when they take a step back and look at what they've done, maybe it's not always just a sense of pride, of accomplishment, but more they finally get the chance to see something and then fear settles in, or insecurity or uncertainty gets a chance to creep in and just ruins everything for a minute. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not an expert in this either, but it's my experience. So what was I doing instead of creating? I was, to an extent, still creating. I was still drawing, still getting my practice in, and still posting um, semi-regularly on Instagram. But also I was trying to enjoy nature more. You know, I went out, explored my country a little bit when I had time, because I'm still very busy. I spent more time with friends and I got to bond with the people who are around me. We spent more time talking and got to know each other better. I mean, it's amazing what you don't know about your friends. And once you open up first, you'd be amazed that the doors just stay open in the best way possible. You know, now we can have deeper conversations about more personal topics and we're closer for it. From that, you get to the next point of being grateful. I'm grateful for the things I've done. I'm grateful for my opportunities and my experiences. I'm grateful for my friendships, for my family, and for the things I have, really. It might sound like, you know, I'm just saying, yeah, everything's great, but... It doesn't have to be great. It just has to be something that you can appreciate. You know, and through tough times, having something that you can appreciate in everyday life, or even if it's something so real, just the smallest thing, if you can be grateful for it, it can make things way better. And it can make a bad situation you know, less stressful, less impactful. It's just another day. So yeah, I could look back at this video and say, oh, I could have done this better. I could have done that better. I could have been more detailed in my description of things. But I've tried so many times to make it. At some point, you just have to say, it's good enough. Move on. <laughs> you know, and if the problem is that I just need to get something out to just reignite that engine and get that drive going again, then that's what I'm doing. So if you found this 
in any way helpful, you can definitely leave a like, and I want you to comment something that has been either impossible for you to get back into that you've started before, or something that you haven't done before, and it scares you so much, but you want to really try it. You want to have that experience under your belt. Again, if you're going through anything like imposter syndrome, I have a resource in my description below, and you can check it out. You know, it's really helpful just seeing what other people are saying about that topic. And maybe you can relate to it, or maybe you know someone else who could relate to it. Who knows? And if you're interested in seeing some of the stuff I've been doing, I, like I said, have been posting very regularly on Instagram, at arcfru. I mean, that's where I started, and that's where I continue to post. So you can definitely check that out. I also have a Patreon and a Redbubble that, you know, that's another thing that I need to work on, but it's there. You can check those out too, also in the description below. If you want to see more from me, let me know by subscribing. The more support makes it way better and way easier to get back into the mood of just making videos and making content that I'm proud of and hopefully you'll enjoy. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching.